And she says, um, the Baron invited us to dinner. And uh, should be so good to grace him. Now, uh, now I should uh, take good care. He's a powerful man. And uh, very old as well. She smiles. Uh, catch looks at Theodorus. Uh, should I show him my true face, or does that even matter? Uh, she smiles. I believe you should. Then I will. She has a sort of uh, wicked smile. Uh, Cash smiles and does a deep bow and turns back. Right. She's now a dra drow wearing a fancy dress. Yes, she's a drow wearing a fancy dress. Show your true face, Jake. Oh, okay. Jake doesn't have a face. Well, that is the, <laughs> the one that's on my token right now is my actual face. Oh. Do you want me to undisguise? Oh, uh, that's... My, my point is your shadow armor might be entertaining. <laughs> Yes. Uh, okay, I'll do that then. You go to dinner in your shadow armor? Right. <laughs> that is a good point. Actually. Without a helmet on, I guess. Well, he's a he's a Asmodian knight. I don't know. Do I, he's a body. He, he's just the body guy. Do you, I, I guess you have some sort of like ceremonial wear for like dinner parties and stuff like that as a knight? Um, uh, sure. Theodora uh, or the guards uh, do take dark art and put him in a separate room. <laughs> Aww. Wait, as you see, um, into the room here, the dinner room, there are servants oh. sort of everywhere. All these serving, serving food at the moment. And you see a, uh, a handsome half elf. He's dressed in uh, burgundy and white. He looks quite young, even boyish. Uh, but his eyes sort of uh, betray his age. As he, uh, as he looks at you, regarding you, seemingly in deep thought. As the food is placed in front of him. He stands up as you arrive. Baron Vandermeer, I am Zacharias Wraith. A uh, cash bowl, bows and says Baron. Just breathe out, gent. Take place. Seat yourself as well. Dinner is being served. He says he smiles, uh, you know, making sure to look at the servants while he does it. He does it. Yeah, they play a nice sort of uh, game uh, on, the, on the table with uh, nice grilled potatoes and everything. It smells delicious and clearly has been uh, cared for quite a, quite a bit. Yes, there's a little wine on the table and water. Once uh, the dinner has been served and the servants sort of leave, he begins to speak. And he seems quite sort of... Uh, uh, a little almost insulted. Uh, eat. He says, looking at you, looking at the food. Well, you come to me as beggars. The last remnants of a forbidden faith. You will promise me much that I have no doubt, but all of that, all that I'm likely to earn from helping you is the Inquisitor's pyre. Tell me, why should I help the likes of you? He says as he begins to, uh, to enjoy his food. Zagreus politely... Start to eat as well, and enjoying some of the meal. And then he looks at the Baron. Well, Baron, it seems that we have much in common. I, um, we, um, come to you not as beggars, you completely misunderstand us. We come to you with an offer. A uh, chance for you to once again seize power. I couldn't help but notice that... Well, no disrespect to you, of course, my lord. But your house is only the second largest in town. Uh, the the uh, lord of town currently flown out to glory at war. And, um... Well, leaving you here. Still at number two, though. By helping us, we could 
facilitate an advancement in that regard. For one. Sort of uh, wakes his hand. The largest house would seem to be not something I'm interested in. If I were, I could certainly get it. I have lived for far longer than you. Which is my house. I remember the victor. She looks. And I've survived for all this time. I will not have you come here tearing down everything I have built. How old is he? He seems rather young. He would seem sort of in the age group of about uh, about fifteen or something. Yeah, you but look of him. What's his real age? You do not don't know. know. Is there... Ask him. Well, if he no. remembers the victor, how long ago would that be? That is certainly a few generations. How many generations is that? There have been about four kings since then. That is very long. How Cast long on... really is a generation, though? Like 30 years. Oh, goodness. Oh, okay, I see why. Yeah. Uh, a king, however, is from, you know, a new king is only crowned when the last one dies. Alright. So it's, a, it's a bit longer. Is he older than Cash? Uh, she would guess so, yes. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, living, uh, living long is all well and good. But it is not just for longevity we exist. We exist for ambition's sake, do we not, dear Baron? Sitting here must irk you. You say you remember the victor. Well, then you certainly remember all that you have lost. And we can bring that back to you. I also remember my father and the follies he did in these respects. I remember kneeling in front of the victor and swearing my loyalty to the crown. I remember my family died refusing to do so. Smiles. Longevity is good and it is certainly better than ambitious death. I understand that one such as you with such a short life must see things differently, but a long life grants you perspective of future opportunities. Sometimes opportunities that could be removed if one were to be on the losing side of conflict. Or never arrive if one never takes risks, dear Baron. Why does, you, he, keep, why you, does he keep talking like I'm a human? What? Oh, what he's not he? talking to you right now. Because he doesn't sense. think? Oh, I don't know. Because he's an ass. Well, Continue. <laughs> Well, um, what was I saying? Yes, but opportunity will never arrive if you do not act, dear Baron. And that is why we are here. You said it yourself. You have lived in hiding for all of these years. Plotting, you indicate, but apparently not executing much of these plots since you are still, well, stuck here in Farhold. Far away from the glittering glories of the court or the or the imperial majesty. We give you an opportunity, as I said, to take it back. If you do not risk, Baron, then you will gain nothing. So not, of course, you will promise me anything, tell me anything, and lie about anything to win me to your side, to gain my aid in your folly. But I shall not be convinced by simple promises. Uh, I've heard it all before, I can promise you, and I'm really only letting you hear and giving you this chance because I thought that the good Thorn would have something more interesting to tell me than vague promises of glory. Uh, Cash looks at him. Isn't it enough that Adrastus Thorn has sent us here? Would you really want to waste his time with all this? His eyes flicker, as he says. Thorn may be a man, a dangerous one at that. I'm sure of that, you have no doubt. But he is not alone in being a man of some power. Well, how about then we offer you... Well, let's see, what was I thinking? Uh, so he doesn't want promises, he wants something more concrete. Well, we don't really have to offer him anything. If we leave, he's screwed. 
No, but we need him. We need his help. And he needs ours. That's the thing. First moment, bah. Oh, sorry. Now I'm speaking Danish. It, it feels <laughs> like he's just wasting our time. Oh, he is. He's to he totally is. He's doing it on purpose, too. Yes. Uh, Cash looks at him quite impatient. How about we just get to the case instead of just sitting here wasting time? Yes. yes. Good. Good to understand you. You wish to go into the forest? Oh, good. I'm glad with that. Stay out of my city and uh, you will have no problem with me. We need access to your city, Baron. Because if we have to go... Well, we need to... For instance, enrich some of your merchants and fatten your tax purses with some of our own purchases. Something you would not have anything against, I am sure. Well, and if, when this matter is just dealt with, an army comes here seeking whoever sold them out and aided the enemy, then my head will be on a pike. My body will burn in a pyre. Zacharias snorts, do you take us for fools, Baron? We have infiltrated towns before and brought low garrisons of, might, uh, of quite formidable foes without leaving so much as a trace. We can shop in secret, if that is your fear. So, uh, so what exactly do you intend to do here? What's your mission? Well, Baron, that would be terribly unwise of me to reveal to you, I'm afraid. Um, you asked before what we could offer you, except empty, empty promises. Well, what we can offer you is a uh, way of striking at the very heart of the nation. We so are in preparations of... Well, I'm sure you have heard of the Fire Axe. Yes, a minor inconvenience. Yes, a minor inconvenience that has drawn a lot of the kingdom's forces elsewhere currently. Guarding is minimal. There shouldn't be too many eyes and ears around the town. Uh, also, could have. That was us doing that. Zachariah smiles. And now we turn our attention um, to this part of the kingdom. As I said, we can promise a way to strike at the heart of the kingdom. I cannot tell how many would suffer from this, but I can guarantee you that, well, motions with his goblet of wine, that the casualties would be in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So that is all well and good, but how does that serve me in any particular way? People may die all over the world and instantaneously, but if I had nothing to gain from that, then what reason would I have to take uh, take part? You mean accept immunity from this disease, of course. It would be very sad if some of it ended up in Farhold, would it not? Yes, but if you never obtain this disease, I have nothing to fear, do I? From neither you or the Inquisition. The cry smiles. My good Baron... You try to shove us away, make us enemies, but we are indeed your fastest friends in reality. We can give you an opportunity, we can give you a window to reclaim some of your lost glory. You do not need to bend your knee to the victor or his descendants any longer. Aid us, and you can stop hiding your family crest as you have. The grass motions to the walls. You can once again fly the banners of the Barkas, if that is your wish, and be proud of it. Adrestus Thorn is a powerful man, and when the time comes he will surely remember those who aided him. Yes. And what do you know of this Thorn? He seems interesting. I've known him for a long time, but it irks me. How much he's changed since I spoke to him last. Perhaps that is the real reason for why I wanted to see you. He says, sort of almost seemingly thinking this to himself. So tell me, 
How is he? What personality? And if we would garner you with some of this information, would you then allow us access to the town? Hmm? Perhaps. Depends on how much information you can give me. If you were in simple disguise and no one were to know anything of you simply other than you were simple adventurers, if no bodies were to end up spread about the streets and the like, perhaps information could buy my acceptance of your stay. Well, I can at least promise you that the that our party here will not be putting any bodies on your streets, Baron. Apart from that, what is to said about Thorn? Zagreus, you know, motions, grabs his goblet of wine and takes a sip and leans back in his chair. The Cardinal is indeed an ambitious man. He is ruthless and very powerful. He has given us a chance at glory, much as he now offers the same to you. And we are bound to him in service. He is quite interested in wrecking some havoc over the kingdom, that is for sure. He seems to think, hmm... Apart from that, I am fairly certain that Thorn is a taken name. I don't think that is who he really is. And I think he is hiding, or trying at least, to hide much of his true identity. Baron smiles. Yes. Yes, I believe that would be true. He's a man of great interest to me. Yes, I seem to think. An interesting case indeed. And yet he sends beggars. Do you think why? Sigurd looks at him. We are no beggars, so we are well, not to flatter ourselves too much, but I dare say that we are quite dangerous. <laughs> no mere beggars, if you if you see. Um, I don't know how many we have killed ourselves, but it numbers in the hundreds. Oh, I'm sure it does. Of that I have no doubt. However, I have no need for anyone to be killed. And perhaps, of course, the king, but I don't think you're up for that entirely. Smiling. Cash looks at him quite angry for calling her a beggar twice. She looks at him, I'm no beggar. I myself is of droll nobility, so please be careful with that mouth of yours. Oh, tell me then, dear dark skinned cousin, what does this queen bring before me? Or does she simply use words as her gifts and as her treasures by my loyalty? Is she a queen or a beggar queen? I mean, we can't. I mean, we can't really offer him anything. That's the thing, though. We don't have anything to offer. Well, in cash case, unless unless he wants something, someone killed, we just kill him. Uh, that could certainly be done <laughs> without well, too much trouble. But uh, but I mean, we're, we're in no real position to give him anything. He hasn't stated anything he wants. Well, uh, I still have the wants. illusion of calm, which can make me stand here without him knowing. Do we really want to kill the Baron? No, 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 just not kill him, just threaten him. I don't think that would gain we as much. Want to, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, Cash looks at we him. Could, what we could do, uh, out of character completely, uh, he has only offered us access, well, he hasn't offered it. Uh, I need to order my words. He has not allowed us to enter the city, but do we really have to care? I mean, as you said, infiltrating it should not be a problem, even if we want to buy stuff. No, I mean, it's it's no, no it's no, I mean, if he says no, he can't stop us. Yeah, that's, that's my point. 
So it's just a futile, like, he's just strutting about, trying to be yeah, important. It he is. has no real power over us, really. Uh, can I say something to him? Just don't threaten him. I, I won't threaten him. Uh, Cash looks at him and stands up. If you give us permission or not, how are you going to stop us? You don't know of what power we hold. You wouldn't even know if we left or came into your city. I also remind you, Baron, that we are the group, uh, the good Thorn sent in when he needs things done. As such, so we are quite capable of accessing the town whether you allow us to or not. It would just go much smoother for all involved, and it would be far less death tolls on all of our sides if we just cooperated. Uh, and Cash looks at her, and, and even if you do try to stop us, Adrastus Fawn is just gonna t come to you. And as you know, he's not really as talkative and as forgiving, <laughs> forgiving <laughs> as we are. <laughs> so no matter what you say, it's not gonna change what's gonna happen. Beside what's gonna happen to you, of course. Perhaps you are the ones who do not know of the power you're currently talking to. Do you think you simply lie to the victor and all others in front of them and live to tell the tale if I did not have some sort of uh, allies in the right places? Of course you do, my lord. That is self-evident. But do you want to waste your resources fighting the people that you share so much with. We have the same faith. We work for the same High Lord in Hell himself. And to bicker like this only strengthen our enemies. When it should work together and forge a darkness that would spread over the land and mm. seize it for all eternity. He's a he's an half elf, isn't he? Yes, yes. Then Cash looks down on that. Cash looks down on that kind of stuff. <laughs> Seems uh, fairly uh, annoyed. Right. Well, Cash looks at him. Besides, don't call me cousin, you half-breed. I know you're not a pure elf. Yes, well, and I think I'm the better for it, it seems. And he looks around. I do not care much for that sort of uh, useless talk. Of course, uh, race say is that. nothing compared to what you can actually uh, do with what you have. I'm sure you will understand in time when you grow older. Cash. You know the time when you are old. Cash, I would still be you're, young. You're ruining this. I'm so Marcus, annoyed at that. It's Marcus Cash will is annoying at him. Marcus will say, "Lady Cash, you will silence yourself, or I will silence you." Cash looks this is not the time. Resent. Now, such bickering indeed is just strengthening our enemies. I do admit that they are our enemies. I have no... I have no wish to see you fail. I just wish to make sure that you know your place here. I currently can make this whole endeavor fall or succeed. And I wish to know why I should do either. I could, of course, just stand aside and allow you to do your work feigning ignorance if it fails, but then I will have won nothing if you succeed. I think it is an interesting case that the good thought would come to me, knowing what I have and knowing I have what he needs. You can always look at it like this, my lord, that we are here at your very table in your very house but the victor and his descendants and the lord of this town is far away fighting a bugbear war that we started right now we are close and they are very far as he looks at you and should it ever come to an order where you were asked by your dear master to do something such as dispatch of me were I to become an inconvenience how would I know I would not stand then without allies in either side Zachariah so smiles uh, of, that is a simple question to answer my lord by not being an inconvenience of course 
you know, it's, but strong men tend to be threatened by others of similar power. Only if he fears betrayal or is uncertain of the true loyalties of said men. Baron sort of leans in and says, Oh, but I'm certain that if anyone asked me to serve, they would always, should always, uh, consider my loyalty something that is uh, pricely, pricey to buy. Surely it is the same with yours. You say you are bound to this cardinal. Perhaps that means he would not trust you if that was not the case. And perhaps at some point you will figure out a way to break this bond. And perhaps at that time it would be good to have one such as me on your side of the conflict. Sacrosius looks at him. I warn you, do not trust the Cardinal. From what I know of him, he uh, is rather scrupulous. He looks uh, especially to Zacharias. So let me ask you, do you really wish to serve or be served? He sort of has a glint in his eyes, really genuine, genuinely sort of interested. Zachariah mm. smiles. That is... Uh, my personal ambitions are my own, Baron. I did not... I did not have much choice in serving the Colonel, that is certainly true. But for the moment, he allows me to fulfill my plans. And as such, I am willing to serve for now. No. So, if I were to aid you, and tell you God was to be destroyed, what then? When the Cardinal has won, and the king is dead, the knights of Valerian eliminated, and the church of Mithras banished far, far away, as bugbear tribes rule the heartland. What will we all have gained? Revenge. Power. Revenge is sweet indeed looks at you. I want you to convince me of this endeavor. I think I must admit that even though I know you come with nothing, and I know that this is not the smart choice, it irks me, as you said, to sit here years and years and years, slowly gathering resources for a storm I know will eventually come. Why is this the one? We... The, um... Kingdom has grown complacent and fat over the many decades it has now enjoyed relative calm. They do not look very carefully anymore, and that is why we have an opportunity to succeed indeed. When we strike, it will be from multiple directions and it will be completely devastating. We are searching for something in the forest. Uh, perhaps you know of it. And perhaps mentioning it would increase your willingness to assist us in this endeavor. It is a place called the Horn of Abaddon. Sort of nourishing eyes and seems to think. More slowly, let me see. And there you hope to find something. Indeed, something the victor left behind. Thought it was secure and safe under lock and key of the Mithran priests, as it were. But it is not as secure as they would think. 
And with attentions drawn otherwise, otherwise in the kingdom. And the opportunity and the moment to strike is now. Mm, seems to think, if you not. Perhaps, perhaps the time is now. There has not before been an opportunity like this, Baron. And I dare say it will not come again. At least not in a few centuries. Are you confident sitting here in a few centuries, wasting away? All the resources you gather, all the allies you have bound to yourself, also wasting away. If you have gathered them up, what is strength, dear Baron, if you do not use it? It becomes lame, limp. You must exercise power to keep it. And how better to exercise power than to facilitate a strike against the hated enemies we all share here around this table? I would like the group to make a diplomacy check. <laughs> oh my. Everyone? 